Good morning, Cougars. How you doing? I'm your art teacher, Mr. Montgomery, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Saturday Morning Art and Fly Tying. Now, this week's fly is going to be the classic Zebra Midge. Now, before we get into our tying, I just want to remind you that these hooks are very, very, very sharp and can be very, very dangerous. Do not try any of this without parental supervision. The zebra midge is a very, very productive pattern. It can catch really small fish. It can catch really, really large fish. It can be fished all year round and it can be tied really, really, really tiny. Okay, so a lot of times we tie them in really small hooks and I'm gonna show you in a minute how little these hooks are. The hook that I'm tying the zebra midge on is called a size 16. And the bigger the number gets, the smaller the hook gets. So the reason they call it a zebra midge, traditionally the fly is tied in black with black thread. You'll see in a minute, we use a silver metal ribbing that adds a stripe all around the fly and up the fly. So it gives it the appearance of a zebra. For the art portion of this project, we are going to be creating a blind contour now our fourth graders learned about blind contour earlier in the school year. Now contour is a French word for outline. So we're only gonna do the outline marks on the drawing. And the reason it's called blind is because we don't look at our paper when we're drawing. All we look at is the subject or what we are drawing. So we are going to do a blind contour of a zebra today. And all you're gonna be able to look at while you're drawing your zebra is the image of the zebra that we are trying to draw. These drawings come out really, really, really fun. The idea is that we are training our brains and our eyes to draw what we are actually seeing, not what we think we see, okay? So a lot of the times we have this idea of what a zebra might look like in our head, but we don't actually know what it really looks like. When we do these blind contour drawings, we need to really focus on the image that we're drawing, take our time and do our best not to look at the picture that we are actually drawing. So first up, we are going to tie up the zebra midge and then we will move on to the blind contour drawing of an actual zebra. Let's move over to the vise. All right, friends, so for our B, this is just a, a tungsten bead in a size 5 64ths of an inch, and the hook is an Umpqua TMC 2487 in a size 16. Now, the higher you get with your the numbers of the hooks, the smaller they get. So we usually tie these anywhere from a 16 18 is even smaller, 20 is even smaller, and a 22 to a 24 is, is so tiny. Um, I'm using a 16 today, so we can actually kind of see what we're doing. First thing we need to do is, is put the bead very carefully on the hook. Okay, and after we get our bead on the hook, we are gonna go ahead and put it into our fly tying vise making sure that it's secure in there. We are going to tie this zebra midge today in a black. So we're gonna use a 70 denier thread, which is pretty thin. You can tie these in red or blue or yellow, green, olive. And we're using ultra wire for this in silver. That's gonna give it the zebra appearance. So I just go ahead and tie that ultra wire in, make sure it's secure. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and try to build up a little bit of a body for this fly. So I'm just taking thread wraps forward and backwards, trying to keep them as even as possible, forward and backwards, go a little bit further down the hook shank, bring it all the way back to the top, wrap back down, and as I'm doing that, I wanna make sure that that ultra wire is pulled tight. And you can start to see the body of the, the fly starts to grow a little bit. And we're gonna wrap down about, oh, halfway down the bend of the hook and then wrap all the way up to the top. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna spin my my tying thread here so it flattens it out and you should be able to see that it's flatter now and that's really just going to smooth out the body of that fly and make it even and 
And there's really not much to this fly. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a half hitch knot in there so I can get my thread and bobbin out of the way. And now we're just going to take that ultra wire and we're just going to create even wraps, evenly spaced wraps all the way up the body of that fly. And that's going to really give it that appearance of a midge in the nymphal stage. And that is why they call it a zebra midge because it's got that nice black and silver look to it. Once I capture that ultra wire, I'm just going to go ahead and helicopter that off. And I just want to just really trap that wire down. And that is the traditional zebra midge. And I'm just going to add a little bit of black dubbing right to the top of it behind the bead. So we just go ahead and create a dubbing noodle. Just wrap that dubbing. It's, it's like a really fine fur almost. And I just want to wrap that around and cover up the top of that fly. It gives it a little bit of a buggy look. And once we finish up with that little bit of dubbing, I'm going to add a few more wraps. Go ahead and get my whip finish tool. Add two or three whip finish turns. Pull it tight and I'll add maybe a couple more for good measure. Really make sure that thing's secure. And I messed that one up, so we're going to go ahead and do it one more time here. It gets really tricky once these flies start getting to a certain size when they're really small. Add our whip finish, pull tight. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. And that is a little bit of a variation on the classic zebra midge. And now for the blind contour drawing of a zebra. So for this drawing, all you're going to need is a piece of paper and a Sharpie, or you can use a colored pencil, or you could use a marker, you can use any color you want. So I'll give you a minute, go ahead and get your materials and I'll see you back for the drawing. Okay, so now I have my piece of paper. I've got my Sharpie. Remember, if you're using a thinner piece of paper, make sure you put something underneath so if that Sharpie bleeds through, we don't want to uh, get any on the table. Now, this is the zebra that I am looking at. I'm going to go ahead and start my Sharpie at a certain spot on the paper, and I am going to begin drawing the outside going around the zebra. Now I am not looking at my paper at all. I'm staring at the picture of the zebra. Okay, and I'm just following around the zebra with my eyes. I'm not looking at my paper. Okay, so I'm just making around, drawing the ear right now. And the tricky thing with these blind contours is finding a line in the subject like the zebra, so I can move my pen without picking it up off the paper. So that's the nose of the zebra. Okay, and it's really important that we don't pick up our pencil or pen. We do one continuous line. Now I'm just trying to work my way up to the eye. Okay, so now that I'm here, I can go ahead and draw the shape of the eye. Remember, I'm not looking at my paper. And 
again, we're training our eyes and our brain to work together. Okay, so now I'm down drawing the leg. And now I need to come back to the belly. Okay, and we're almost done with the outline here. So this is the rear or the hind leg. And there's that second leg kind of tucked back in there. And now that I'm now that I'm done with my outline, I can go ahead and pick my Sharpie up. And we're going to kind of switch this into what's called a partial blind contour. So I'm going to now adjust my Sharpie back to that spot that we started. And blindly, not looking at my paper, I'm going to start drawing in some of these stripes. Okay, I'm just working my way around the zebra. I'm not looking at my paper. I'm looking at the direction. I'm looking at the shape. I'm looking at the width. And the more times you do this, the better you're going to get at it. Because like I said before, we always have kind of an idea about what something looks like. But until we're actually looking right at that object, it makes it kind of difficult to envision exactly what it looks like. So I made it up to the top and I think I'm, we're looking pretty good on the stripes. I'm just going to now add a few in here. Now I'm going to color in the nostril, that little bottom jaw, and the eyeball. And then I'm going to begin coloring, coloring in some of these stripes. Now you can do blind contours of really anything you could set up what's called a still life. You could set up some objects on the table like fruit or flowers and you could do a, a blind contour of the flowers. You could do a blind contour of maybe of a little brother or sister. You could do a blind contour of them. You could do a blind contour of a parent. You could do a blind contour of your hand. The big important part about these blind contours is try do your best to try and not look at your paper. Okay, and then you can always go in after and add some details and stuff, but they're supposed to look really fun and they're supposed to look pretty abstract. And I think we're, we're just about done. I'm happy with it. Just a few more little details. And then always we want to go ahead and sign our names, write the year. And I'm going to write that this is a blind contour. And remember, a contour is a French word that means outline. And remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to put up the picture of the zebra that I used to draw it. And you can do your own blind contour of a zebra. All right, Cougar. All right, Cougars, that was amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining me for our Saturday morning art and fly tying. I hope you enjoyed the blind contour drawing of the zebra and the zebra midge fly. Now at the end of the video, I am going to leave the picture of the zebra up on the screen that I used to draw so you can do your own blind contour. They're supposed to look funny. They're supposed to look goofy. They're supposed to look abstract. So enjoy it. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week. We'll see you later. Adios.